I'm Nate Eaton chatting with Tyler Willis, who is in a hospital bed right now at Ermac. Uh, and you've had quite, quite, a, quite a few days there, Tyler. Tell everybody, first of all, how you're doing. I'm um, doing really well. The uh, staff here has been taking great care of me. Had great doctors, nurses, um, I mean, physical therapists, occupational therapists, everybody's just been really on the ball. That's great. Now let's talk about how you ended up there because I'm sure it was not your plan to be spending a few nights at Ermac. No, it wasn't. After uh, successfully completing a climb on the Grand Teton uh, two days before, we went from Mount Owen. We were going on the Coven route, which is the normal route up Mount Owen. Uh, we successfully summited Mount Owen and we're on our way down. Finally reached solid ground where we had left our trekking poles and felt like we were in relative safety and picked up our trekking poles, started walking down the snow field, and within about a minute of getting to our trekking poles, I stepped on a soft spot, soft spot in the snow and broke through and fell down about 30 feet, uh, getting wedged into a crevasse in the, in the ice. So are you an experienced climber? You sound like you are. I've done quite a bit of climbing and mountaineering, yeah. And have you ever encountered a situation like this? No, never with myself, a partner, or even come across anything quite like this. But it sounds like you were prepared in the fact that you had poles and everything. It's not like you were just up there, you know, freewheeling it. Right. Yeah. And we, and we had ropes, ice axes, crampons. They weren't on at that time because we were in a spot where we felt we were relatively safe. And afterwards, the Park Service did an investigation and they said, yeah, that is such a freak accident. You know, many, many people have crossed that same snow field never roped up, no crampons because it's relatively flat and never had a problem. I just found that magical spot, I guess. Wow. So you step on this spot, you fall through and you fall about 30 feet and you're stuck. Yep. I, did, I get wedged in and my legs are free hanging. I can't see the bottom because by then it's about nine o'clock at night and my legs are free hanging. I yell to my buddy, I've fallen, I've fallen. Uh, he comes as close to the edge as he can, says, I'll throw a rope down to you, and tells me to tie it onto my harness. Um, but I can't reach my harness because it's wedged into the ice there. So he pulls the rope back up, ties a big loop in it, and lowers that back down, which I got around my um, armpits, so that I don't fall down any further. And from there, the rescue really gets going. So you put him around your armpits, and he tries to lift you up. But, but you're unable to move. Yeah, I'm still too stuck to move at that point. And so he, there were two other climbers, the only other two climbers that were on that same route that day. And they were coming down and they were just about 20 minutes behind us. And by that point, they were close. He could see their headlamps. He's yelling to them, my buddy's in a crevasse, my buddy's in a crevasse. And the guy yells back, I have crevasse training, rescue skills and gear we'll get over there as quick as we can. So they rope up, which they wouldn't have been roped up either. Um, but knowing that there is a crevasse there, they rope up and start moving towards the crevasse to try to provide assistance. And from what I understand, they had the communication device that they were able to call for help. Yes, they did also have a GPS device that signaled directly to the uh, search and rescue team that, hey, we need help. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't, they weren't able to establish two-way communication with them, but it did let them know that we were in trouble and they got a team headed out pretty quickly. So at what point did you start to lose consciousness? Because you, from what I understand, you were unconscious at one point. Yeah, for most of the time and then most of the night I was unconscious. Uh, for about the first 30 or 40 minutes, I was conscious. Um, first. Ryan uh, Stolp, one of the other climbers who I didn't know at the time, but man, he's a hero of mine now. He rappelled down in to um, help me get unstuck to attach a uh, rope to my harness because I just couldn't take the rope around my arms anymore. They said I was screaming, begging for help. Um, I don't really remember any of that, but I do remember him coming down and helping me out. Uh, at that point, he climbed out, and they proceeded to try to pull me out by my harness, um, but I guess I got stuck again. Then my uh, best friend and climbing partner, Josh Anderson, climbed down into the crevasse and 
helped get me unstuck from there and then climbed underneath me pushing up while uh, Ryan and his climbing partner Kaya were pulling from the top. And so they, at, with that, with Josh pushing from underneath and those two pulling from the top, they were able to get me up onto the glacier or snowfield. Holy smokes. And I'm sure the fact that it's dark doesn't help. I mean, that adds an extra uh, right. aspect of scariness and complications in trying to get to you, I would imagine. Yep. And Josh said when he got down to me, my face was covered in ice and snow. I was unresponsive at that point. So he cleared the ice and snow off and my gear was completely soaked. It was very wet. There was water dripping and snow falling down on me. Um, so once they got me out, they cut all of my clothing off, donated all of the clothing that they could possibly spare to me, and then drug me off of the ice over onto some rocks because I was, of course, too cold to make it through the night on the ice. And my buddy laid across me trying to keep me warm. Mm. And they basically just waited for um, search and rescue to arrive. And Kaya had some medical training and she was checking my blood pressure, heart feeling, rate, uh, breathing, Dirty. things like that as well. Oh my gosh. So what do you remember? <laughs> what hasn't <laughs> been told to you that you remember? Okay, well, the, first, the next thing I remember from being in the crevasse to, uh, is about 7 o'clock in the morning. There was a ranger sitting across me, and I was all bundled up, and he said, uh, we've got a helicopter coming. We're going to get you off this mountain. And uh, I don't remember this very well, but they said I argued with him about the cost of the helicopter, said, oh, I think I can hike out. And he <laughs> said, you're not hiking off this mountain, buddy. <laughs> Is that something you would do typically? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's not, that, my buddy said, we, that's how we knew Tyler was back. Was <laughs> no, I'll, just, I'll just walk down. Yeah, I got this. Yeah. So <laughs> you remember waking up, there's the ranger. But other than that, you don't remember that gap of time when you were asleep? No, I mean, nearly 10 hours. Wow. But through the night, I don't have any recollection of anything. The, the Rangers arrived about 3.30 in the morning and they had a large down jacket, uh, bivy sack that they could put me in, uh, insulated pad, and were able to provide further assistance to Josh, Ryan, and Kaya, who were of course exhausted mentally and physically from getting me out. And then you're flown to the hospital and what did the, what did the doctors say? I mean, what was your, your prognosis? Um, yeah, so I was short-lifted off of the mountain by the Jenny Lake Rangers, who are just awesome. Couldn't ask for a better ranger team, you know, rescue team. Uh, they took me into Jackson, and then from there, Life Flight took me to the hospital here in Idaho Falls. And initially, they couldn't get a temperature on me. I was so cold that they thought the thermometer was broken. They tried another one. No, we just can't get a, a temperature reading on this guy. Uh, so I had severe hypothermia. They got me warmed up pretty quickly, and I started responding more and more. Um, and they were able to get word out to my parents and my wife that I was doing okay, that I was responding to questions, things like that. Um, and then I've got some severe cuts on my knees from flailing around trying to get out of the glacier. Uh, as far as injuries for myself, the main injury is from my in my armpits where I was dangling from the rope mm -hmm. as they were trying to pull me out. So I'm working on uh, hand mobility. My right hand is doing quite well. When I got here, I could not get my two fingers together, and now I can get all of these. Um, my left hand is a little bit more useless. I don't have a little bit, just have a little bit of uh, mobility there. But working on that, and the prognosis right now is positive. But there's going to be a lot of work ahead for me. Well, but it looks like you've made so much progress on the one hand that hopefully within a few days you're, you're back to normal on the other. Do you have any uh, severe frostbite anywhere or anything like that? I actually don't have any frostbite or uh, any effects from the hypothermia that I can tell right now. And hopefully you're going home today. Sounds like they're going to get me out of here today. Yep. Wow. Nice uh, to my parents' house in Rexburg. <laughs> oh, okay, and then you can recover. So are you, are you able to walk and, and move, get around? I can walk a little bit, yep. The uh, physical therapists here have had me out walking the halls a little bit. Uh, it's slow and tender, but 
I'm uh, making progress. I definitely couldn't have walked off the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I, I would imagine you've thought a, t- a time or two that this could have ended differently. Yep. I mean, one, one thing went wrong, followed by many, many, many things going right um, for me to get out of there. So I have some new heroes, my buddy Josh Anderson, who's already a hero, and then Ryan Stolp and Kaya Mosenthal, who were there and just in the right place at the right time with the right gear and the right training. And between the three of them, they saved my life. There's no way I could have got out on my own. Are you kind of in a way relieved that you, you can't remember it? Do you think that that would have been more traumatic if you were awake during that whole time? Because I, I wanted to ask you what you were thinking during that time, but it sounds like you don't remember much. Yeah, I actually do. Uh, I've spent a lot of time talking with my friend Josh Anderson and he's, he has some trauma from that, you know, going through that night with me. And he said, and he's been on search and rescue, but he said seeing his best friend in that situation just made it that much worse. And he's good friends with my wife and my children. Uh, you know, we're just family friends. And he said, I, I just could not go home and tell him that we lost you. And that determination is really what got me out. There were points when I was down there where I said, I don't know if I'm going to get out of this one, buddy. And he said, yes, you are. I'm getting you out. You do not give up on me. And he just, he talked me through it. Wow. How long have you guys been friends? Um, I moved to Evanston, Wyoming, where I live uh, seven years ago, and we hit it off almost immediately. And so you guys have climbed before together. Yeah. In many places around the world and skiing, climbing, mountain biking, paragliding. Um, we, we like to get out and have some adventures together. Tyler, how many kids do you have? I have two children, ages uh, seven and four. Okay, so have you been able to see them and, and tell them everything that happened? Um, yeah, I've talked them through it because of the COVID rules here at the hospital. I only have one visitor, so I have my wife as my one visitor, and she's been here taking great care of me. Um, and I've been doing lots of Zoom and Facebook phone calls with the kids, and my daughter's made the cutest cards you'll ever see. Just says, thanks for saving my daddy's life, and I'm passing those around. Oh, that's great. I bet, has your wife said at all, no more hikes? Uh, I don't think she, <laughs> she hasn't gone there yet. We'll have okay. that conversation at some point. It's going to be a long time. <laughs> be a long time, she said. Yeah. Uh, do you, are you anxious to get back out there, or do you think this might cause you to, to rethink? I mean, any, any nervousness at all about hiking again? Um, I've always had some nerves crossing snow and ice. And I will have more nerves now crossing snow and ice. As far as being on rock, I, I like rock climbing. I like being in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, my buddy and I have already talked about how we'll pack our bags differently mm. instead of focusing on weight. What can we eliminate? We're going to focus on what gear do we need to add, not only for ourselves, but so if we come across someone in my situation, we can be ready to provide assistance. And just so I'm clear, you guys had been hiking all day, right? And then you were coming down. Yep. We started from the Lupin Meadows Trailhead at 2.50 in the morning to head up. And we summited about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Mount Owen. So not only does he have all of this to worry about, but you're probably exhausted by starting at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yep. And having done the Grand two days before as well. Wow. So, wow. Uh, well, it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we're reporting this good ending rather than uh, some other types of stories that we have to cover. Do you have a message, Tyler, to other hikers, other people that, that go out and, and do similar activities now that you've been through this? Yeah, um, I think that they just need to make sure that they're focused on being prepared. Uh, so often, it's, uh, you know, in this game, it's about how lightweight is my backpack? and maybe a little bit more on how long could I survive with what's in my backpack and who could I help along the way with what's in my backpack. Uh, Ryan and Kaya didn't need to be carrying all the gear they were. They didn't have plans for use, but they were ready to use it and it saved my life. So um, thinking about that and then just using extreme caution, even in places where you think you're going to be safe. I did still have my climbing helmet on, And that certainly played a factor in saving my life as well. What do you say to them and to your best friend who have saved you? Are there words that you can express 
I mean, what, what do you say when, when you when you get to the hospital and you see them? How, what, what do you say? <laughs> I don't know if there are words, you know. Um, I mean, I haven't seen my buddy yet. I've done some zooming with him, and he's gonna get a big hug when I see him. And Ryan and Kaya were planning on a reunion dinner in Jackson sometime when uh when we've gotten through this a little bit. And I mean, there aren't words. I get to go back to my wife and kids because of what they did. So yeah. that's uh, nothing else that I could say. Well, Tyler, again, we're so glad that you made it out. Thank you for sharing your experience. And who knows who might see this one day that, that takes that to heart when they go, when they go up and, and go hiking.